Hello, my name is Hikma Jamal, and I will be talking about understanding the after effects of microfibers in the aquatic environments. And more specifically, I will be talking about the after effects of microfibers on Daphnia magna. I'm interested in this topic as microfibers ha um, are a huge problem in our environment, and um, it is also one of the most prevalent and dangerous type of microplastics. Microplastics in themselves are gradually increasing and are found in almost every environment. They're found in our, they're even found in our blood. Um, so it is important for us to understand how microfibers or microplastics um, can eventually impact organisms even if their microplastics have been ceased. And it is also important for us to understand how um, if naturally derived um, fibers are as dangerous as synthetically derived fibers. So I found some headlines that kind of indicate the importance of understanding microfibers so or microplastics. And they recently found microplastics even in lungs or in places that we would have not expected to find microplastics. And it kind of talks about how important it is to understand how it could affect marine life and so on. So this is my outline for the presentation. I'll start off by talking about how about what microplastics and microfibers are, then I'll explain in depth what Daphnia magna is, then I'll start with my paper, talk about the hypothesis, the methods, the results, and the relationships that were found in this study, and then talk about the conclusion and um, end with my take-home message. What are microplastics? There are any sp um, plastic particles that are less than five millimeters in diameter. Some examples are plastic waste, beauty products, clothing. And with this rise or, of global usage of plastics, there, uh, there's, as I mentioned before, there's this gradual increase in microplastics. And some, increase, some examples of microplastics, sorry, are microflakes that come from plastic waste, microbeads that come from beauty products and microfibers, that come from clothing. Are microplastics harmful to the ecosystem and to the human health? Um, as I mentioned before, they're, very, they're small, they're found in almost every environment, so it's important for us to know what they could do to us eventually. Um, so previous studies by, previous study by Campanelli and others in 2020 um, explained that in order for us to evaluate the risk of um, the exposure of microplastics to the ecosystem and onto the human health is if there is a substantial amount of data um, on the exposure and the um, effect levels of microplastics. And because there's not that much data on the microplastics effects on humans, there's uncertainty in this area. And then there's also a recent discovery um, by Leslie and others and this year, in 2022, that was pu published this year, they were able to find the plastic poly polymers in the blood of humans. What are microfibers? As I mentioned before, they're a type of, um, the most prevalent type of microplastic. They're also one of the most dangerous. And the reason why they're one of the most dangerous type of microplastic is that they act as a sponge. So they allow harmful pollutants to attach themselves to the, um, to the fibers. So this, this is an infographic that I found online on how microfibers are introduced to the ecosystem or to the environment. It starts off with washing the clothing, putting our clothing in the washing machine, and the clothes then shed the microfibers. So that's how microfibers are created. Um, so they're shed from, um, the clothes shed the microfibers into the wastewater, and then the wastewater um, is sent to the wastewater treatment plants. However, the wastewater treatment plants are unable to filter out 20% of the microfibers that are sent there, so it ends up being introduced to the environment, and since they do act as a sponge, they allow these, they attract these organic pollutants, and then once um, and some organism has eaten the microfibers, it's introduced to the food chains. So there are three different, well, three common types of fibers. There are naturally derived fibers, meaning that it comes from nature, but it has probably been modified. Then there is non-plastic, and then there is plastic. 
The three that we will be focusing on is lyocell, polyester, and polypropylene. Lyocell is, um, lyocell is, it comes from nature, it is naturally derived, however, it has been processed with advanced synthetic substances. Polyester is synthetic, um, and it is also made from petroleum, and polypropylene is made from thermoplastic polymers, and is fade resistant, stain resistant, hydrophobic. So, what is Daphne and Magna? Daphne and Magna are water flea, and another, another name for them is water flea. They're small pinktonic crustaceans belonging to the kingdom Animalia. They are up to five millimeters long, and they are located in circumpolar regions, meaning that they're found in northern lands. And they're found in brackish waters, lakes, pools, and ditches. And one thing we'll be looking at about the Daphnia magna, mainly about the Daphnia magna, is their food and feeding behavior. So they can filter out anything that is, they can filter anything that is less than 50 micrometers. Um, and they can, let me draw this out. So they start off by filtering out these particles throughout the, um, at the fine setae, which is located at the thoracic legs, the thoracic legs, which is right here, and then is moved along the groove um, at the base of the legs to the mouth. Um, so all particles of suitable sizes are ingested by the Daphne magna, and uh, they don't even have a selective mechanism, which kind of makes them, well, it makes them a good model organism to look at when comparing toxicity of different substances. So the article that we will be looking at is the, at the effects of synthetic and natural microfibers on Daphne and magna and are Daphne and magna dependent on these different types of microfibers. This study was conducted at the Department of Environmental Health Science at Kongkuk University in Seoul, South Korea. And it was published uh, at the Aquatic Toxicology Journal in 2021. Um, this is also this rec this paper. This article is the first one to study the effect, the toxicity of microfibers depending on the different microfiber types, and it also looked at the after effects of these of microfiber exposure on Daphne and magna. They mentioned previous research that looked, observed the feces of king penguins and found natural fibers in the feces. And the re their results suggested to them that microfibers found in aquatic environments probably have natural origin. So the reason why this study, the study by Kim and others, mentioned this research because there's not that many that talk about natural fibers as much as they do with synthetic fibers. And, um, and also not many papers kind of go on or talk about the after effects of microfibers. So that's why this, this study is the first one to talk about it and the first one to go into detail. And this is why it's important. So the purpose of this paper is to investigate the effects and the after effects of the exposure of the three different types of microfibers on the Daphne and magna. And the hypothesis is that the effects of the microfibers on Daphne and magna depend on the type of microfiber and the three that we mentioned um, that is being experimented on in this paper is lysol, polyester, and they, ac they acronymed it as PET, and polypropylene, and they acronymed it as PP. So this is the method's outline. Um, they start off by preparing the microfibers, and then they expose the Daphne and magna to the microfibers. Then they estimated the depuration rate, and what depuration rate depuration is is basically um, the process of removing impurities from the body, um, and it's usually seen with aquatic organisms or marine and aquatic organisms. Then they observed the gut damage in the Daphne magna after the microfiber exposure. So starting off with the preparation of microfibers, they received, well, they obtained the fibers 
will be lysol fiber from k industries in korea and they obtain the synthetic fibers both the polyester and polypropylene from the korean institute of industrial technologies these fibers did not have any added additives so once they obtained these fibers, they cut them using a micro scissor and then measured the, mi measured the microfibers and noticed that there wasn't really a significant difference in measurement between the three different microfibers. Then they dyed the microfibers using eye dye and eye dye poly. And the reason why they used these dyes is for them to determine the fiber uptake of the Daphne magnet after, Daphne, um, after microfiber exposure. So now the exposure of Daphnia magna to the microfibers. They obtained the Daphnia magna from the National Institute of Research in Incheon, Korea, and they, um, they cultured them in moderately hard water for about 72 hours, and they put them in a 16 to 8 light dark photo period, meaning that they were in the light for 16 hours and then the dark for 8 hours. They were fed one, a green algae once a day, and the image on the left is an image of the green algae, and also the image on the right is an image of the Daphne magna. Um, they were fed once a day with green algae. And in order for the researchers to determine fiber uptake, they did not feed the Daphne magna 24 hours prior to microfiber exposure. So the concentration, they created two different microfiber concentrations, one at 1,000 milligrams per liter and another at 2,000 milligrams per liter. And these concentrations are high compared to the microplastic concentrations in fresh water. And they reasoned that the reason why they did that was to observe the after effects of microfiber um, intake. The process to exposing the Daphne magna to the microfibers starts off by preparing these microfiber solutions, then putting four milliliters of the solution in six well plates, and the image on the top is an image of the six well plates. Then they place five of the Daphne magna in each well plate, then they ran three replicates, then three experiment, then they ran three experiments, and then they recorded the immobilization rate for every 24 hours, and then this experiment was ran for 48 hours. And what immobilization is, it's basically to reduce or eliminate motion of that organism. Now, the estimating depuration rate and quantifying the after effects. The researchers observed the depuration rate between the exposed groups um, with the two different concentrations. And then they noticed that the mortality rate was too high at the 2000 milligrams per liter solution concentration and they set the concentration exposure at 1,000 milligrams per liter. However, they still use the data that they received from the 2,000 milligrams per liter concentration um, for the immobilization rate. So after the 48-hour exposure, they randomly selected 30 individuals. Then they placed one milliliter of clean, moderately hard water in 48 well plates. Then they placed these individuals in separate well plates. And then they supplied them with feed in order to start the depuration process. Um, and what depuration is, it's when an organism placed, is placed in clean water for a certain period of time in order for them to cleanse and purge themselves of any impurities. So that's what's happening right now after being exposed to these microfibers. And during this time, they're looking at the mortality rates and then they're also looking at the after effects of you know the growth rate, the feeding rate, and also the length of the microvilli. In order for them to observe the gut damage in the Daphne magnum, they obtained blue, brilliant blue FCF dye and they created 4,000 milligrams per liter solution. And what they, um, so basically after the whole 48 hour exposure and the depuration process, they put the Daphne magna in a solution with these blue, brilliant blue FCF dye in, about, in a 12 well plate and they incubated them for about 15 minutes. They rinsed them multiple times with distilled water and they fixed them with 4% formaldehyde. They observed their gut using optical light microscope and they also observed the microvilli and the, gut, um, the gastrointestinal tracts using biotransmission electron microscopy. 
So now this is the results outline. They have results on the immobilization rate of Daphnia magna exposed to the microfibers. They have results on the depuration rate um, of the microfibers in Daphnia magna. They have the results for gut damage in Daphnia magna exposed to microfibers. And then they have results on the after effects of Daphnia magna exposure um, to these microfibers. The immobilization, starting off with the immobilization rate of the Daphnia magna exposed to these microfibers, we notice, we can see this graph that it shows the immobilization rate, and on the x-axis it shows the exposed groups at these two different concentrations and comparing them to the control. And what the control is, is basically the Daphnia magna that have not been exposed to these, um, exp to these microfibers. So we see that polypropylene at the highest concentration has the highest immobilization rate in at 24 hours and at 48 hours. And, um, the, and then we see with Lysol that it has the lowest, one of the lowest immobilization rate at both the concentration, meaning that it's probably less toxic to the Daphnia magna compared to the polypropylene. And the reason why we see this, this reasoning behind this phenomenon is that, well, the reason that they came up with why this phenomenon is happening, is occurring, is that when they put the lysol and polyester into the vials, they noticed that they sunk to the bottom. Well, polypropylene had floated to the surface, so they thought that Daphne and Magna had more contact with polypropylene than they did with polyester and lysol, so this can um, probably show why they had an increase in this in mobilization rate. So now with the depuration of microfibers in Daphnia magna, the Daphnia magnas have, they ingested most of the fibers that they were provided. Um, and the size that, in this study, that the, the size that they mentioned that def, these Daphnia magnas can ingest is, be, is between 10 to 70 micrometers and the size of all the three different fibers were less than 50 micrometers, so they were able to ingest it. And they also noticed that the size of these Daphne magnets had increased um, during the depuration. They noticed that they went from one millimeters to 1.6 to 2.0 micrometers, I mean 2.0 micrometers. This graph shows the number of Daphne magna with microfibers in their gut. The x-axis shows the different fiber types, or the um, different fiber types of the different exposed groups, and then the bar graph just shows the time of depuration, the, f like the 48 hours that they were depurating, and basically seeing how much of these microfibers are still left after they had cleansed themselves or are trying to cleanse themselves of these impurities that are in their body. So we see that Lysol is the quickest, quickest to depurate. And then we also notice that polypropylene is the slowest to depurate for the first 24 hours. However, after 48 hours, most of the Daphne and Magna were able to depurate. And then with Lysol and polyester, if most of the Daphne and Magna did not depurate after the 48 hours, they were, not, they were most likely not able to survive. This graph shows the number of surviving of Daphnia magna ingested with the fiber. So it just shows us through time how much of these Daphnia magna are surviving. And we see that polypropylene has the highest survival rate, especially for, um, for the first 48 hours. It has a close um, survival rate compared to that of the control. And then we see that lysol and polyester have this decrease in, um, have this decrease in survival rate. And then they also boosted the time to 96 hours in which we see that polyprop, polyester has the highest mortality rate. This graph shows the area of microfibers in the gut of the Daphne magna depending on the time and we see that there is this um, decrease in intake of microfibers from polypropylene to lysol, polyester, and that after, poly, after 40 hours, polypropylene had ingested most of the microfibers, meaning that they were able to excrete most of the waste, most of the, definite, most of the microfibers from their bodies. Now we'll be talking about the gut damage and the Daphne magna that were exposed to these microfibers. They talk about the permeability of the intestines, like does these microfi microfiber exposure affect 
um, the permeability, does it increase the permeability, does it decrease the permeability. They also look at the microvilli size of the Daphne and Magnus inside in their gut, and they kind of compare it to the controls. So this graph shows the number of Daphne and Magna that are exposed to these microfibers. And the x-axis shows the different exposed groups at these two different concentrations. And it just shows us how it affects these 30 randomly selected individuals for each of these groups and each of these concentrations. It uh, shows us that there was an effect to these, micro to these Daphne and Magnas, if they affected the gut damage, if there was mortality, um, etc. And we see that um, polypropylene at the highest concentration has the highest mortality, and then we see this gradual decrease increase of mortality from lysol to polypropylene, and we also see this gradual in um, decrease of gut damage from when we go from lysol to polyester to polypropylene. And then with gr um, the images of B, C, D, and E. B, the control, has no effect, as we can see that the blue FCF dye did not um, invade or go into different parts of the body, did not leak into different body cavities, and then we see that the exposed groups, C, D, and E, Lysol, polyester, and polypropylene, the blue FCF dye did leak into it, meaning that there was an effect, um, and affected the permeability of the intestines, it increased the permeability of the intestines. And the image in the bottom just shows the um, the images of the microvillies of the controlled lysol, polyester, and polypropylene. So we see this comparison, we, st we start to see this little comparison between the number of Daphne magna exposed to these microfibers and the immobilization rate. We see that the polypropylene at the highest concentration has the highest immo uh, mortality rate, and then we see that the polypropylene, again, um, at the highest concentration has the highest immobilization rate. So there's probably some type of um, relation onto why, and it kind of makes sense if you're dead and you're not moving that much. You know, mobilization is just to reduce or eliminate motion, so if you're, they're not moving, they're probably dead. So now, the after effects of Daphne Magna exposed to microfibers. Um, the Sorry, so they measured the food intake, they measured the growth rate, and they also looked at the length of the microvilli. So with the amount, um, with this graph, it shows the amount of algae consumed by the Daphne Magna, and how they measured it was they just looked at the amount of the algae left over um, in the well plates. So we see at the zero to nine hour mark that there is this high food intake from lysol and polyester, and then we see this decrease in the food intake after the nine hour mark. Um, and then we also see that the control has this static stationary amount of food intake that they take throughout um, the 48 hours. And then, then we also see that the polypropylene has a, has a similar food intake to that of the control. And then now with the length of the microvilli and the Daphne Magna, all the exposed group have a shorter microvilli length compared to that of the control. So now the length of the Daphne Magna, depending on time, the x-axis just shows the time of depuration at 0, at 9, 24, and 48 hours. So we see that the control has this gradual increase of uh, measurement, of, I mean, of length through time. And then we also see that polypropylene has this significant increase um, of length through time alongside the control. However, when we look at the length of the Daphne and Magna at, that were exposed to lysol and polyester, we see that there is this, they're not growing that much. It affected their growth rate. So now with the growth rate, um, this graph shows the growth rate of Daphne and Magna over time. Um, and it shows that at the zero to nine hour mark, as the previous graph showed as well, that there's not really much of a growth to the Daphne and Magna. And this kind of is confusing because why do they have why do they have such a high food intake at the zero to nine hour mark, but have the lowest growth rate for the first for the initial stages um, for the zero to nine hour mark? However, we do see this correlation between the growth rate to 
the length of the microvilli. So for the first zero to, eight, zero to nine hours and the nine to 24 hours while they were measuring the growth rate, we see that their length, that the length of microvilli is proportional to that. So the, um, continuing with the after effects of Daphnia magna exposed to the microfibers, we notice this relation between the feeding rate and for the microfiber exposure. And we also notice this relation between microvilli length and growth rate. So starting with the relation of feeding rate and microfiber exposure, um, they mentioned that previous studies have found this relation between the two, that they were able to determine that the accumulation of microfibers affected the feeding uh, behaviors, it affected the food uptake, it affected the nutrient absorption, meaning like it, it could cause them to be malnutrition, to have malnutrition, and it also affected their metabolism. And in this study, they were able to um, see, observe that during the initial stages, it has this high increase of food intake, but then it's this huge decrease in the in intermediate and final stages. And they consider this unusual for this increase of food intake as both poly, um, polyester and lysol have this increase, this high incidences of gut damage. So they hypothesized that this increase in food intake um, was in order for them to obtain more energy for depuration and for survival. And then with the relation to the microvilli length and the growth rate, they specific, they made sure to remind the readers that microvilli lengths are important because um, they, determined, they determine nutrient absorption. And previous studies have shown that the length and the density of microvilli um, affect nutrient absorption, which affects the growth rate as well. So um, in this, the results from this study have corresponded to what that previous study had mentioned about how microvilli length is, um, how it corresponds to nutrient absorption and growth rate. And then we see with the initial and intermediate stages um, during the growth rate, how it affected how it was proportional to that of the microvilli length. So they hypothesized that the treatment group that have these high incidences of gut damage, that have these decrease in nutrient absorption um, that resulted into their malnutrition and why they don't, their growth rate was low was probably due to the length of their microvilli. However, their, um, the study did not conclude if microfiber exposure did affect um, the reduction in microvilli length. Um, however, they plan to however they plan to um, look at this in future studies. So, um, in conclusion, they looked at three microfibers: lysol, polyester, polypropylene. They um, were able to determine that synthetic fibers have a greater impact on the immobilization rate rather than natural fibers. However, the, um, the strongest effect on mortality, on growth rate, on the gut damage during depuration was the after effects of micro of exposure to the naturally derived fiber, lysol. Uh, and the take home message is that overall, the hypothesis was correct. The effects of microfibers did depend on the type of microfiber ingested by the Daphnia magna. Both the natural and synthetic microfibers did negatively um, affect the Daphnia magnus. It affected their immobilization, depuration, and mortality rate. It damaged their gut and also had a negative after effect. It affected the food intake. It affected the length of the microvilli. It also affected their growth rate. And in general, we learn that microfibers, both naturally derived and both synthetic, um, have a negative impact on Daphnia magna, and also with this rise of microplastic usage all over the all over the world, we can only imagine that if there is more ac accumulation of these microplastics, it could affect not only these smaller mi uh, smaller organisms, but it could eventually impact or affect bigger organisms, um, and this can affect the ecosystem, the food chain, etc. And what we can learn from this is that even if a product claims to be natural and biodegradable, it could still be harmful, um, to have a harmful after effect to microfibers, well, to organisms. 
that come in contact with these products and even if it's not toxic at the time, it could affect them negatively afterwards.